Hi, I'm Susan and uh, we're at Becker Home in Bray in the Shetland Islands, which is at 60 degrees north. My grandparents were very keen gardeners and I got a love of gardening from them. I went on to study horticulture and worked in the industry for many years um, and then now I'm retired. This is my passion. So about six years ago um, when we were considering growing our own food uh, my health had seriously deteriorated. I was very depressed um, and I'd been researching into uh, the use of pesticides and herbicides in the growing of food and I had I, I walked into the local um, co-op one day and it's like I had an epiphany and it's like I can't eat any of this food in here it's covered in poison and that's what really spurred me on to do what you, you see here and grow all this food that's grown organically um, it's very nutritious because there's, there's, the soil is healthy, I've been building up the ecology of the soil and the natural microbes and everything. And as a result, I don't have health issues anymore and I'm really happy. This is a, an ornamental tobacco plant. And as Hugh will testify, if you touch the leaves, they're very, very sticky. Uh, so I grow it as a, as a natural flycatcher. Um, it also has very beautifully scented flowers, which scent at night time so it also attracts nighttime pollinators into the tunnel. I garden intuitively um, even though I've had a formal sort of training in gardening I've thrown the rule book out and I've, I've come to realize that it's better to work with nature rather than against nature. I grow nettles as a companion plant. Um, I do have to obviously keep them under control but they attract the green fly so rather than the green fly being on my pl edible plants they go onto the nettles they also the seeds are also highly nutritious and you can make nettle tea to use as a compost tea they've got lots of uses so I actually use them as a further crop there so I consider them another crop so as we've already looked at you will see there are what people consider weeds and pests in my in amongst my garden but to me, it's a uh, it's part of a part of growing. You need you need all these things in your garden to make it grow in a balanced and healthy way. The Shetland Islands is is on a is on sixty degrees north, so we're we're on a line with Norway. So it's quite very challenging conditions to grow here. It can get very windy. We've had eighty mile an hour winds here, uh, and these polycrubs are built specifically to withstand that kind of wind. So the best way to to grow food crops is is to create a shelter, and the polycrubs are ideal for doing that. This nectarine tree that you see here has grown from a stone, which was the result of a, a nectarine that we bought from the local supermarket and ate through on the compost. Then when we top dressed dressed in here with the compost, it, had, it germinated. So it's about four years old, I think, roughly. Um, and as you can see, it's fruiting prolifically. There are sparrows in the tunnel at the moment. Now, many gardeners would be going about that, but actually they eat the insects that you don't want in here. Um, and if I've got something I need to protect, then I just put a bit of netting over it because um, they will eat your seedlings so that's easily remedied. Um, they reckon it takes uh, about three years to get a, a, a proper predator-prey ecological balance uh, and that's certainly proved to be the case in here. I'm not overrun with pests. Many of the, th the things that people consider weeds like docks, there's docks growing in here, chop and drop which is a, a permaculture technique. They're what what are called mineral accumulators. So they draw, they have very deep tap roots. They draw the minerals up and bring that into your, into your soil that you want there for your plants. So it's all about wor working with nature rather than against it.
I was cooking some Shetland lamb and I needed some rosemary. Uh, this was before um, or in the early days of the polytunnel and I bought some cut rosemary from the local shop, uh, had some left, stuck it in the ground and this is the result. If somebody came to me and said, I, I don't know anything about gardening, I want to start from scratch, it's very, very easy. We've, we've been led to believe that it's difficult and we've been disempowered over the years, but it's actually very easy. Um, it's as simple as you can grow, most of the crops I grow here, you can grow in, in, a, in a container or a tub. If you haven't got much money, you can, you can repurpose things. I repurpose buckets. Part of one of the permaculture principles is to reuse and, and recycle things, and these blue barrels wash up quite readily around the shores of Shetland. Um, I presume they're from the aquaculture industry, but I'm not really sure. Um, so we collect these when we find them, and we're beachcombing, and they make ideal water storage. Um, we also discovered that this tile, tile edging makes a fantastic uh, gutter, uh, and so all these barrels have been filled from rainwater because you've got a huge water harvesting area. Um, we also collect seaweed, which is no locally known as tang from the shore, and we make a, a compost tea from that. Once I sort of got into to growing edibles, um, I then got inspired to, to look at, into medicinal herbs like the feverfew, and also then branched out into growing dye plants because I'm also interested in natural dyes. And this is woad, which is a member of the cabbage family, and you get a lovely blue dye. So this is one of my, the polycultures I, ha I have in the tunnel um, and in amongst it is this lovely lemon verbena um, and it's, it's a half hardy shrub so although because we're surrounded by water it doesn't get very very cold in Shetland, we don't get really hard frosts, it, there still um, has been occasions where the temperature has dipped below freezing in here so what I've done is in the winter I prune it back cover it with a fleece and then I've got these hot water bottles. So they're, they're the local Shetland milk bottles filled with water, tap water and I just put them around it like a, like a hot water bottle and they heat up during the day and they just emit enough warmth just to keep it above freezing. As well as creating food for myself I'm also very keen to create habitat for wildlife, for insects. Um, there's currently hoverflies on on this parsley. Um, so much of the growing is, is bearing this in mind, is that I'm also creating habitat and food for the insects and for the other wildlife. I, I follow basic permaculture principles and one of those is to use companion planting. Um, so I use nasturtiums um, around the apple tree because it deters the codling moth. Um, but it's also both its leaves and its flowers are edible and the seeds as well, um, these are also edible. They're very fiery, peppery, and you can um, pickle them and use them like capers. So all the, all the plants have like a dual purpose. The long-term plan is to create a food forest, so an indoor food forest for the things that won't grow outside. And outside, I'm, I'm also growing, a, developing a food forest. So it's moving away from quite so many annuals to uh, more sustainable perennial type planting. This variety of pea is a heritage variety from Sweden. It's a very old variety and as you can see it's quite unusual. The, the flowers almost grow in a racine and the peas taste really delicious. So un unless you create a shelter belt, be it um, artificial with, with netting or pallets, um, or with actual, we tend to use willow trees because they grow very well in Shetland. The wind will just nip the tops of any, anything that you grow in, any shrubs or trees, it just burns them off. Due to the, the latitude that we're at, we have a 24 hour daylight and plants like the people like to make the most of the summers here. So we have a very short, intense growing season where kind of everything just bursts into life and does its thing. Um, because through the winter we, we get very short days um, and lo long nights. 